Hi, I'm Sean Carlock. Welcome to Send It Volume 8. Today I'd like to talk to you about extreme velocity spread versus accuracy. Now we run into the issue of extreme velocity spread versus accuracy at a number of different places. I get guys all the time frustrating themselves and working and shooting a ton of components up trying to get a gun that shoots under half minute, three-eighths of a minute, down to quarter minute or sub-quarter minute, and that's fine. Great accuracy makes a great platform, but a lot of times they do not even pay attention to extreme velocity spread or forego extreme velocity spread for this ultimate in group size accuracy at 100 yards. Now, when we start talking about what's important, when you are shooting out to, say, 600 yards, you can get away with some extreme velocity spread. It's not going to make you or break you. But when we start getting out to 1,000 yards, there can be a quite a difference. And where you see this extreme velocity spread come from are guys that do not want to hand load or guys that are chasing the extreme accuracy so much that they disregard extreme velocity spread. Now, we're going to compare the difference today between a gun that shoots a half minute of angle and a 10 foot a second extreme velocity spread with a gun that shoots quarter minute but has a 50 foot a second spread. Now I know 50 feet sounds like a lot of spread to have to deal with, but it's very common with factory ammo or even reloading techniques that are not uh, focused on extreme velocity spread reduction. Sometimes it can simply be components. We've experimented with changing different primers and we're quite surprised early on at what an effect simply changing the primer had on extreme velocity spread. Now, the thing that will separate the very successful long-range hunters from the guys that are randomly successful, probably the biggest part of that is practice and testing. Like I said, up to 600 yards you can get away with a lot, but a lot of guys want a three-digit gun. We want to be able to shoot out to a thousand yards, thousand yards and in. Hear that all the time and that's great. That's a great goal and easily attainable if you're willing to put in the time. You have to test. You cannot simply take your load, put it together, or take your ammo, put it together, verify out to 600, and since that's the only place you have to test that's convenient, just say, well, hey, I'm probably going to be good out at 12 or 1300 or a thousand yards. You don't know that. You have to test at those distances to see what's going to happen. Do I have consistent BC? Is my extreme velocity spread kind of biting me in the butt a little bit when I get out to extended distance? So let's take a look here at our 338 edge. Shocker, I would pick that, of course. Let's look at it at 1,000 yards, shooting at a deer. Let's put a three-shot group on him, and let's have a extreme spread of 10 feet a second, but a half minute shooting gun. Okay, now let's look at that quarter minute gun that we worked and worked and worked to get it down to shooting a pretty good ragged little hole. A quarter minute 338 gun is pretty serious medicine, but the extreme spread is now 50 feet a second. Okay, now that we've got that up there, you can see the differences quite clearly here. Even though you don't have much windage spread in that quarter minute gun, the vertical spread is killing you at a thousand yards. And as soon as you start trying to stretch out to 12, 13, 1400 and beyond, it's just going to get worse. There is no recovering from this past a certain point. So, at the end of the day, you can get away with 600 yard shooting with almost anything in terms of extreme velocity spread, as long as it's not radical. And when you get out to 1,000 yards, if you get down to a certain limit, say if you cut that 50 feet down to 20 feet, you can probably make that work reasonably well. At some point, at some distance, to be successful and to have all of the shot success resting squarely on your shoulders, 
you're going to have to have quarter minute and single digit extreme velocity spread. So at the end of the day, the pro shooters all know this already. When they look at a group at big distance, their groups are usually wider than they are tall, 99% of the time. Because they've knocked that ES down to a single digit that's manageable, they know that their ES is consistent out over long range, and now most of the group ends up being variations in wind that they did not pick up on, and that's where you want to be. You want it to be down to the lowest common denominator being your ability. Now, at the end of the day, you need to do whatever it takes to make this happen. You on his shoulder? Yeah. Put it right in the crease. Tell me when you're on it. On it. Hold. Send it. Smoked him!